So at the end of this video, stay tuned. I'm gonna talk for a little bit about what I'm learning. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to put in clips of uh, Ellis and Winnie, some cute clips from us the last couple days. So if you just wanna skip my annoying voice, then go to the end and see my beautiful kids and I enjoy a couple things. And if you wanna hear what I have to say about community, um, then stay tuned. All right, it's been a while since um, we've popped on. It's been about, I don't know, five days. Um, but I'm going to attach, I don't know if I'm gonna put the clips of our last couple days before this or after this, I don't know. Um, but we had a couple cute things um, that I filmed of the kids, so I'll include that in this video. But um, I just wanted to talk about the importance of um, community, uh, building a community uh, when you're in grief. And it's a lot easier said than done, but it is important to just surround yourself with people if you can. I know that's not possible for everybody who's grieving. I know that um, some people don't want it, but you know, my wife and I were not, we we're both very social um, and she married me. One of the reasons is because I'm social. Um, and you guys have seen, but she's very good at talking to people and she's kind and, um, so we both, you know, loved each other's personalities and the way we interacted with people, but we would never be the first to say when we were in our relationship and in our marriage, we were never the first to say like, let's go out with friends and have the kids babysit, like that type of thing. Um, that just wasn't, wasn't our thing. What we found joy in was just being together, just straight up quiet date nights at home, um, watching a movie together, talking, um, you know, filming a video, whatever, as long as we were together. And since I lost her, I'm having to find myself again. I'm having to find who, who I am again. Um, it's not easy and it's not fun, but I guess what I'm, what I'm coming at with the whole community thing is if you can find a group of people that you trust and build a relationship with them, um, whether they're old friends that you've reestablished or they're new friends, try to dive in to a community because it really helps. Days and nights, especially nights, are so lonely now. Um, when you don't have your partner, you, you, you miss out on so many things. And I already valued our relationship so much, but I value it 50 million times more now that I don't have her. And gosh, the simple things that you miss. Just talking, just having some adult time because if not if you take out the community aspect then it's just work kyle and parent kyle and although i love work kyle and although i love dad kyle i also need a little bit of time of adult kyle you know talking with adults about our days and talking with adults about our likes and dislikes and um my community kind of came up with this Bible study group that I got involved in and I've met some amazing, amazing people. Um, I could truly, I, I am getting emotional. They are amazing people. And I wouldn't have met them if it wasn't for me reaching out and doing something that's uncomfortable for me. And that was, you know, joining this group. Um, I've never done anything like that before, nor have I ever had any interest, but because I did it, I have now met a solid group of friends 
that I truly in my heart feel like are lifetime friends. And it made me really sit back and think the other day that community is so dang important. Building yourself a village. And that could be family, that could be friends, that could be new friends, that could be old friends. People that bring you up and not bring you down. Um, because believe it or not, you'll have people who want to try to bring you down. And my dogs are just having a time right now, but I'm just letting them be dogs. Just be nice to each other. Okay. Be sweet and nice to each other. Don't, don't be rude. Okay. Thank you. Um, but it's all about community, building a community and keeping that community and stepping out of your comfort zone. And if I never would have done that, I wouldn't have met the group that I'm with now. So my second thing what I wanted to talk about was I did something very public on, and what I mean by public is with me and my family and the church that I'm involved in, um, this past Sunday and, um, I got baptized, something I've never done in my life. And decided it was time and it was such a special day. Um, other people in my community that I built got baptized as well, we did it together. Um, and it was a special, special service. We all got baptized. Um, we, and then we went and got food afterwards and um, just special, 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 special group of people that I truly thank God for. And I think, I think just, I'm just thankful for them and thankful for the community that I have built and continue to strengthen and continue to embrace because without them, honestly, I don't know where it'd be. Um, I'd still be going down a path and I'd still be trying my best to be the best version of myself, but they bring out such a good side of me and uh, I'm just so thankful. So, um, I wanted to bring that up. If you're currently grieving or you're currently struggling with anxiety or depression or whatever, um, do your best to try to build a community if it's possible. And I know, I know it's easier said than done, but you can start really, really small with people that you already know or feel comfortable with and you can expand all the way up to a new group or a, a different, trying something new for the first time or getting involved in a community class. I don't know, um, but do your best to build a community because um, we need that as humans and we need that as grievers and we need that as, I'm gonna put myself in a group here, but spouses who've lost their spouse widowers, widows, we need community. Um, and I'm not trying to label all widows and widowers like you need to do something like this. Um, this is just the path that I'm choosing to take, but I, I do know as a person who's heavy in this grieving process and still very early, that building yourself up and building a community truly is a game changer and I don't know where I'd be without it. So I'm thankful to my friends um, for everything that they've supported me in. And my whole family was there on Sunday. And then we all went out to eat afterwards. A couple of Ellis's um, friends and his family went out to eat with us too. Like just, we're building this village and we've already had one and it's just getting bigger. And I know personally that the bigger your village is, the more support you have when in need. And I'm always in need, always. I always need help. I always need support. I always need childcare support. I always need, you know, a boost. Um, I always need love. And I also like to provide that for others. So I can provide those things for other people too. So community is so strong and I'm so thankful for it. And I, you know, Anybody can take my advice and throw it in the ocean and let it wash away. But um, I know personally that community's made all the difference. So that's what I wanted to step on and say.
<clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Do you remember those days when you were a child or a teenager and you'd have a project due the next day and you'd go to your mom or you'd go to your dad and you'd say, Dad, Mom, I have a project due tomorrow. We need to go get a poster board. We are living that dream right now. Um, Winnie is the star of the week. So we are going to, I sent some photos to be printed um, at CVS and then we're gonna print those out and put them on a poster. And then we need to color and decorate her poster and bring it to school tomorrow. So we are going out. We already did Ellis's homework. We did Winnie's other homework. And now we gotta go get this poster together. So I feel like I'm a kid again <laughs> and doing a project last minute. So come along with us as we do that. So here's our rough outline. This is my family. So we got one with all of us, and then we got one recently of us. This is me. Like it's supposed to be an area. This is me. That's Winnie. The other day at Disneyland, the light's reflecting on it. But and favorite place is Target. So she's in Target in a shopping cart. So now, are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do, squares, sorry. That's yeah. okay, no. Go all in there. All around. Like that? It's beautiful. Like you want to get this edge too, all these edges, or else it's not going to stick. You're too close to the center. Here. Yep. Okay. Look at how cute. All about Winnie. I am four years old. My favorite animal is a? Cat. And my favorite color is? Pink. And my favorite food is? Mac and cheese. Ooh, and then there's my family. There's mommy and daddy and Ellis and Winnie. And there's Winnie and Minnie Mouse. My favorite thing to do is dance. My favorite place in the world is Target. And I want to be a nurse like my auntie when I grow up. Very nice. We are currently in a power outage. We just got home from baseball and Winnie's a little bit scared, but it's okay, baby, I promise. All it means is that the power is off for a little bit. Here's our clean table here. And we just need to be creative about what we do with our time. And we just have fun in the dark and then they'll turn the lights back on soon. So we just light candles. Maybe we read books, tell stories. 
Get all nice and cozy with our puppies. We could even go outside for a walk with the dogs. Let's do it. Right now? Yeah, first let's let Ellis organize his cards. I know he wants to. It's almost done. And then we'll go outside. I have these couple cards and I'm done. So my poor Winnie is so afraid of a power outage. And I was like, what are you afraid of? And then I'm thinking, well, she's never been in one and it's completely pitch black and it's getting darker and darker because it's getting nighttime as you can see. So I said, let's go to the backyard and let's start a fire. I don't know what that noise was, but we'll find out. But she seems really happy that we're doing a fire. And there's still a little light out, so I'm gonna go start a fire for the kids and I have stuff to make s'mores. So, uh, yeah. And here's our beautiful fire getting started. It's still in the baby stages. And oh boy, might need to give it a little love. There we go. We gotta get that log down there to catch. It's not catching. And there's my babies outside. If you guys need to move away from the smoke, we can just move our chairs. We could play a little Connect Four. We could play a little Jenga. Let's have highs and lows of today. Since we didn't have a traditional dinner. Today we went to baseball practice. And then after baseball practice, myself and the team mom invited everyone to go to ice cream. There's so many which we did. So let's go over some highs, buddy. Uh, can I tell all the highs? All of them, yeah. So many. Uh, one, I like getting all those Pokemon cards. Yeah. Two, I like going to Brewster with all the other kids. Yeah. Three. How many kids from your baseball team went to Brewster's to get ice cream after practice? Basically all of them. Literally our whole team. How special was that? And what else was a high? London is so happy that she's getting Pokemon cards from me, and I'm happy about it. Nice. And she hugged me two times. Wow. Getting a hug from another person. Two times. Two times. Wow. Because she's so happy. She was it. happy, huh? Because she doesn't have that much gold, actually. Wow. She only has three. Winnie, what about you? Any highs? Yeah. I have a high that Ellis gave me a golden Pokemon card. So thoughtful. Um... I don't have a wall. And also, because you set up that fire for us. Yeah. And also, everyone's being so kind to us. Who's being so kind to you? Like, you and I. Oh, my special girl. Huckle, do you have any highs today, buddy? Don't get too close to the fire. There you darn stinker. Daddy? Jeez. Flower, any highs? Good girl. Good boy, Huckle. Yes, buddy. Water, yes, I can. One. I want to try one. I will get you a sparkling water right now. I just want to try one. Okay, I came in because Ellis requested a sparkling water like I had. And as you can see, the power is back on. But they are just so darn cute outside. But I'll tell them the power is back on, but I'll let them know. Like, let's stay outside because it's just so cute having this random, fun outdoor night. Um... So I don't want to tell them the power is on, but I'm going to be honest and let them know I still want to stay outside. So let's go bring him his special sparkling beverage. Guess what, guys? Power's back on. <laughs> but I was thinking we'd still stay out here since we're having a cool night by the fire. What do you think? Power's back on? Yeah. <laughs> I got you a little sparkling water. Okay. You guys can share. Can you Do you want the one with grapefruit or the one with just grapefruit. no flavor? Oh, so that's the green one. So we have to share. The you guys grapefruit. share, and then if you need more, I have more. Good. Is it good? The grapefruit? That's my favorite flavor. I just want to try that one. Ooh, this is it. just regular water, just what? with with bubbles. You like one better? Because I'm going to take the other. I like both. Alright, well you guys have those. I love you. I thought you already had one. I did, but I was going to have another water. It's yummy. Okay, go ahead. Just remember to always be careful. Good. 
good distance. You want to get it nice and burnt so it melts. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. I like it a little tiny. The kids don't like burnt marshmallows on their s'mores, and I'm all about it. So I like it kind of. They gave me this one. It's the way to go. You need it to be burnt. Burnt marshmallow. Show me your s'mores, baby girl. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> wow. Are you making yours, buddy? Yeah. Let me see. Mmm. Oops. Gotta put that back in. Hold it nice and tight. That? Mm-hmm. Eat it. Um. So then you'll see in a little bit. Um just my beautiful kids and how well they're doing. Um, I gotta say, from the bottom, bottom, bottom of my heart, after Sunday and these last couple of days, my kids are just, they're on a whole nother level of happy um, right now. One that I have not seen, I don't think, since Jenny passed. I'm hesitant to say that, like I always am, because it's a scary thing to say but I'm seeing them truly happy, succeeding um, with their own communities, with their friends, with their school, with their extracurricular activities, with how they're being at home, how much they're helping me and, you know, doing their chores and, you know, just appreciating such small things and, and, the love that they're showing each other and I'm just seeing such good things and both therapists are reporting to me about the children uh, how well both of them are doing like they are my they are my idol they're both my idol and I'm so stinking proud of them but I know they couldn't do it without their community right their friends their auntie and uncle their other auntie and uncle up in Oregon their um, their amazing um, village that they have, you know? And I gotta say this, it's hard for me to say, but, and me too, right? They're, and they're, and they're beautiful, perfect mom. Like all those things combine into why they're doing so well, right? Jenny and I's parenting, um, the love that they've seen and continue to see and their community. So I'm so proud of my kids, I love them. And if you are grieving a loved one or a spouse, look for community, whether it's a, I've said this before, but a grief group, a church group, a, um, a work group, something where you're in a group of more than one person and, or just therapy and it's one other person. I know it's easier said than done, but it has helped me so much and if you can't do that right now and you can't find yourself to do that, then don't. Everybody's got to grieve their own way. I'm just suggesting and offering how much it has helped me. And I want to share that. So love you all. Thanks for watching. And see you next time. Bye, guys.